you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Peter. Sort of setting us up for communion tonight. We just got through Easter. The power of God, the resurrection. You know, some places look at the awfulness of our sin pretty hard, and I think that we ought to recognize that. On the other hand, do you, have you thought how great the salvation is that Jesus Christ has provided for us? <sighs> Coming from Lancaster County, we say it wonders me. In other words, I'm still unraveling. Yes, I understand what happened to a certain degree, but it's still, I, I still marvel to the extent that God would go for us and for me. I don't think I ever want to lose that wonder, by the way. I'm not feeling bad about that. But Peter is writing about this salvation and uh, remind. You know, here he was. Uh, he had been passed over to be walking with a rabbi. Uh, he was a fisherman. He had already moved on with his life. He's doing his occupation. And along comes this rabbi and says, hey, come over here, follow me. And he got a second chance. And he watches this man do miracles and he hears the truth of the word of God that he had been around all his life. But suddenly, now it meant something. And then he has this tremendous experience where he denies the Lord and the Lord goes out of his way to restore him. And, he, and then the guy gets up and he preaches on the day of Pentecost filled the Holy Spirit and just everything goes, breaks wild and he is just, he is on the ride of his life going, wow. And he wanted us, I, you know, this is written for our benefit, he wanted us to experience the, the wow of our salvation. I'm sure that's probably not written down anywhere, but that's, I liked it. We're going to read the beginning of chapter 1, verse 1, but we're going to go through verse 5. Really, I'm going to skip, uh, I'm going to do those, but mostly preach from verses 3, 4, and 5. But I'll start at the beginning. Peter, an apostle of Christ to the strangers scattered through Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, and Newville. Do you ever put yourself in there? I mean, he wrote to me. Elect. Here's what he says. You, are, you were thought about. Elect. According to the foreknowledge of God, God saw down the line and said, Hey, I want them. The Father, through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace. Be multiplied I, over and over again. Now it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That's how it happened. Resurrection power. To an inheritance. Here's where we're headed. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away and can't be taxed. Thought I'd throw that in there. But it's, you know what? It's not up for discussion. It's done. I like it. Reserved in heaven for you where nobody can tear it out of your hands. Where there's no depreciation. Where inflation won't rob you of the joy of the Lord. In fact, you probably get there and be twice as joy filled. Not bad. Verse 5. Who are kept? Here we are. By the power of God. Through faith unto salvation. Ready to be revealed in the last time. I tell you what. If we're not living the last time, I... I, well, I would feel sorry for anybody who doesn't think we are, put it that way. Because we've got to be leaning over the edge. I, I imagine there are people under the altar saying, how long can you put up with this God? He says, as long as there's another soul to save who is willing, I'm not willing that any should perish, but all would come to repentance. Okay. Now, how are you going to argue with that? Aren't you glad for what God's doing? Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. It encourages us. It reminds us uh, what you're doing. And Lord, help us. We live in the church. We understand spiritual stuff. There are a lot of people around us who don't have a clue what we're even saying. So Lord, help us to live it. And as we try to explain the faithfulness and goodness of God, we're asking that your name would be honored and you would be glorified for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. 
Have you ever tried to explain spiritual things to people who have no clue who God is? Of course, if you say, hey, I remember this one guy. It was funny if I have to say. We had a rather aggressive witness or one group that I painted with, and he was obnoxious. And he said to the other guy, have you found Jesus yet? And the other guy said, I didn't know he was lost. Now, he was being funny, and I sort of thought it was cute, too, but I tried not to laugh too much. But we used, and, and I, you know what? That we are, how many didn't understand what that meant? We understood what that meant. But to the unconverted people, we use, Christ, we use salvation, and they're going, from what? I, the only really place that's ever used is in a Christian context. And I don't think we have to change our verbiage, but we do have to help them to understand. You know, there's a couple reasons why this doesn't happen. Sometimes it's really hard to tra translate things that we understand from a biblical language into the vernacular of today. Born again. How do you get born again, Nicodemus says. You know, I mean, I think we can get it from there. But there are some times when if someone is not spiritually attuned, it's hard for them to understand what's talking. And I, and I, I say, Lord, help me to... One of the, several years ago, many years ago, there was a, fa a fellow who said we need to have a, uh, a church that, that is relevant to our world. And so some people, I'm going to say dumb down the word. <laughs> That's the only way to how to do it. One of those guys actually has come back and said, boy, did we make a big mistake. But on the other hand, we need to be able to give a, a reason for the hope that lies within us in an intelligent way. And, and so I'm not faulting us, but sometimes they don't understand our jargon. And the other one is some of these things, uh, if you don't know the Lord, it, it... Well, I still don't understand all of it. Do you? I mean, the why? Oh, because Jesus loves me. It wasn't God was lonely and he needed us. He just did it because he does, by definition. He loves us. He cares for us. He makes a way for us. So I'm always, I'm glad for that. I don't totally understand it, you know, but I'm glad for that. And so I, I just, you know, as we're looking in here, some of the things and, and uh, or, you know, about our salvation. First, one thing, I, I can explain this. That salvation comes from God. I didn't come up with a plan. All of sin comes short of the glory of God. You know, the wages of sin and death. You know, if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart, I shall be saved. But that's not my plan. Jesus says there's no other way you know, but by me. Here's the thing that I, one of those things I, I really think is important in James. We were studying James. And it says, every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. The part I want to emphasize here is every good gift comes from God. I tell you what, when it gets sort of nasty, you've got to almost think, God, I'm having a hard time seeing you in this thing. But the good things. Now, it doesn't mean that God, you know, some people take that a little further than I would and say that if you serve God, you always get your way. That's not true. Because then we'd be just spoiled babies. But it does mean that when good things come, we know we can give glory to God. I, uh, I sounded probably too much like a preacher when I was driving that van when we got it. And some of you heard the story. And I said to the salesman, who I don't know is really a Christian, I'm driving and I said, you know, the, you know the definition of coincidence? And he says, no. I said, it's when God chooses to rename anonymous. I said, where I come from, we raise our hands and praise the Lord. And, and the guys look at me like, I said, I won't do it because I'm driving. And afterward, my wife says, hi, you really sounded like a preacher. <laughs> thank God for good women, you know. She says, you didn't even thank the salesman for his hard work and think it. I, I got, I covered next week when we went to pick up the van. But, you know, one of the things we have to remind ourselves is God is in control and I'm not. I've said it this way. There is a God in heaven and I'm not him. 
It was God's plan. You know, in Revelation chapter 13, I think it is, verse 9 in that area, he, he, Jesus is described as a lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. God always had it in the plan. He always wanted to redeem us. It was always He going after us. It always was God being proactive in the, in the forward thing. And He provided for us because we needed a Redeemer. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. So it's, it's a God thing. I, I like to stand up and take credit how wonderful it is that I'm saved. You know, some people are afraid to say they're saved as though that's a, a, a cocky kind of thing or, oh, look at me, I'm saved. Hey, I'm glad to be saved. I'm glad that we have the privilege of communion. I'm glad for that because it's something I could have never done and you could not have done either. And so in here, Peter is saying to these people, you know, God does some things and, and, and you know, it was always his willingness. You know, I quoted earlier from 2 Peter chapter 3 that he's not willing that any should perish. Uh, he was long-suffering, King James says. He was patient with us. How many of you know God's been patient with me and you when we were not wanting to do the right thing? I was talking to a friend on the phone this week, and I said, I am so glad that God answers prayer. I, there are prayers that I have prayed that have not come to pass yet. But I know that God, the Holy Spirit, will continue to bring them if I'm out of the way. I think some of my grandparents' prayers for me are still coming to fruition that God would work in my life. I'm thankful for that. I can't find that anywhere. I just know that God answers prayer. That's just personal opinion. It's pretty great because the, the wonderful thing about the gospel is it changes us. Paul says we were Old, these old natured kind of people, and now behold, all the, you're a new creation, he says. I don't have to be good enough because God is creating in me a new nature. And that make, first, I'm good enough because Jesus died, number one. And number two, he is at work in my life. This is all part of salvation. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Uh, we are in the process of being saved, if you please. Hopefully every day getting closer and closer to what Jesus looks like. And so I, I'm really glad that God is at work. Now, it, this morning I preached pretty hard about us taking responsibility. And I think there's a, there's a, a tremendous truth but, uh, to that as well. Salvation changes our relationship with God. Before we got saved, we were strangers, we were foreigners, we were aliens with God. We had enmity with God. Well, we had, you know, we were on, we were destined to die and go to hell. But now we have been brought nigh, we have been brought close. Our relationship with God changed in a big way. And, and actually, our relationship to sin changed because once we got saved, we're supposed to be dead to sin. Sometimes we believe in resurrection there, you know. I'll just be alive just in a little bit. I'm being sarcastic. Some people think they can entertain sin and it won't hurt them because now they've asked Jesus in life. Let me tell you what. It's, they tell me that for up to an hour, if you cut off the head of a rattlesnake, it can still bite you and kill you. By reflex. I really don't know and I don't want to care. I, I really, I, let me tell you. If I'm close to a rattlesnake for an hour, I'm stupid, okay? But I'm thinking, if that is true, even though the devil has lost the ultimate war, he is still flopping. He is still trying to, to hurt us. He is still trying to negate God's will in our lives. But I'm supposed to be dead to sin and alive to Christ. So you can't take away something without input, putting in something or infusing something in a good way. So God will not allow us to be tempted above what we're able, but uh, with temptation will also make a way of escape so that we may be able to bear it. He helps us. Our relationship with God has changed. We went from aliens to family. Now we are the, the work of Christ to he, well, he holds the, the keys of hell and death, and he's eliminated the effects of sin in our life to a certain degree. The only time that I really get stung by sin is when I still entertain it. 
just a thought. But, you know, salvation changes our relationship with life. Sometimes I, I, you know, the apostle says it, Paul says it like this. I'm ready to go. Uh, I've kept the faith. I've finished the course. You know, henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. And he's all ready to go. And one place earlier in the Romans, he says, Hey, I'm caught between the two places. I like to stay. I like to go. God's keeping me here for this time. But whatever. But isn't that a weird thing? Do you even get an idea this guy's afraid to die? That fear of death that had been holding us captive. Now, I, I will tell you this. God put that self-preservation in every one of us to stay alive. That's why we drive on the right side of the road and we try to eat healthy when the doctor says, would one of you get off the scale? And at least we try. I want to remind you that diet is a four-letter word. And sometimes it's in my vocabulary and then it's a bad diet, the other kind. But, you know, I'm not afraid to die. That fear of death because I know the Lord is in control. It's, it's a whole day. But you know, that, then I, I'm looking like, now I have a purpose. He has a plan for my life. I've got to be busy. What does Jesus say? I must be about my father's business. And I'm saying, hey, me too. Because the longer I serve him, I'm thinking, you know, there's some stuff that's just... Uh, some people preach against everything. I, I don't. I think there's a lot of stuff that God doesn't care. But then there are some times when the Holy Spirit whispers to my spirit and said, that's not good. Paul says, all things are lawful, but things, not everything is expedient. It's not for the best. And, and though sometimes we say, you know, that's just not a positive thing. Why waste your time? That's why I don't diet. I, you know, he didn't say that. <laughs> uh, but, you know, on the other hand, there are some things when the Holy Spirit nudges us I'm not trying to be more holy than you. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to walk close to the Lord. I'm drawing close, just a closer. That'd make a good song, wouldn't it? You know, and sometimes the closer you get to the Lord, the less the other stuff really appeals to you. Someone, someone says, well, did you see that? Well, not really. Are you going home for the Country Music Awards? Not really. I, I'm sorry if you're a big country music fan. I'd like to ask you, what country would that be? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But, you know, there are some people that just go overboard in a lot of things. And, you know, I, anything. You can go overboard anywhere and you can be out of kilter. The closer I get to the Lord, some of the other things, that you get can't word that you have cancer and you have one year to live, that, that changes your priority. You, you start loving the Lord, he changes my priority, for I hope, for the best. So the things I do, I want to, if I knew I had a year to live, I, I sort of think, man, I wonder how that would change me. I was thinking about that. Was it 50 years old? One year to live. And I'm thinking, man, I'm past that. I wonder how much time I have. Lord, I'm going with the psalmist. Teach me the number of my days. Lord, help me make them count. And that's not, a, that's not a competition with anybody else. I just think, hey, I want to make it. I, I, you know, it doesn't matter how you start. It really matters how you finish. And I want to finish well. Don't you? I never had that thought when I was not living for the Lord. I was scared to die. Now I say, man, what can I get accomplished till I die? I mean, who can I affect? Who, who can I share the word of God with till I go? I mean, Lord, guide my steps. Back up, devil. I'm coming through. Oh, by the way, pray for me. I got invited to do the invocation at the Little League over here in town. We might have to have revival and the ushers come forward. I, no, I'm just, <laughs> what an honor. What an honor. Saturday morning, I'm going to be at Little League. I never played Little League because I was never little. I was always a big kid. <laughs> I was too fat to run after the ball. But uh, I could have been a good, like, backstop. But 
you know, God's grace and His mercy change us. Aren't you glad for that? I am so glad that the person I was is not the person I am today. I'm sort of even liking me a little bit now. You know, the salvation we have is pretty secure. Now, don't jump for the fence. I believe there's a lot more security in our salvation than we want to let on. I am not, the sword of Damocles is not over my head if I do something wrong that God's going, that's it. His grace is more than enough. That does not excuse bad behavior, however. But and there are some people that say, one bad thought, you're gone. Forty years you can live for the Lord, one bad thought, you're, do- you're toast. And then there are other people on the other side of the fence that say, once you say those magic words, Jesus come into my life, you can never be... You know, the, I have the power to walk away, and I have the power to stay and serve the Lord. And I, I, I know that sounds really uppity. I do believe in the, the keeping power of God. He says a hedge around those that fear him. I, I know all the verses. But I, I will just say that I wrote down uh, a thought to myself. I give them eternal life. They shall never perish. Neither shall anyone pluck them out of my hand. And when, this is in John chapter 10. and Verse 28. And then he goes on to say the thief comes to rob and kill and destroy. But I've come that they might have life and have it abundantly. I don't think that the devil can rob us from God. I think my bad behavior, my poor choices, and my rejection of God. I, you know, some people say, was that person saved when you bury them? And I, 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 I've given up on trying to figure out who's where. I'm not, in, I'm not into the management section. I'm into the sales. And, and so I, sometimes we want to say, do you think they... You know what? Shall not the judge of all the earth do that which is right? I just want people to say, I met you and I saw Jesus. I met you and I can't. I actually had a guy say to me, and I can't be the same as I met you. I'm assuming that was a compliment. But actually, when I met him, he was far from God and had a lot of views that I would think were ungodly. When I left him, we would travel and listen to Dr. James Dobson on the radio for an hour as we were driving along. And uh, I, was, I am thrilled to say that he understands the Word of God, whether he's surrendered to it. But he can't say, I don't know. You and I have been pouring into people, and, and you know, this salvation is so great, we want to share it. Not in a, a pushy way, but in a, a thankful way. I want you to see what I saw. You know, it, it, the Lord is at work in my life. He's at work in your life. One of the things we're going to do tonight as we come to the table, I guess I was preparing and I'm thinking, Lord, you have been so good to me. Just to know that I'm, I'm right with God. I didn't say perfect. I, I'm not arrived there yet. But just to know that I've been forgiven. Just to know that he's heard my prayer. And said, Lord, forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And he has. And he has the power to do that. And he gives us divine enablement. I, when I come to this table tonight, I, I'm coming with such a thankful heart. And, you know, we sing a song sometimes, Search me, O God, and know my heart today. Man, I, see if there be any wicked way in me. And the proviso is, Lord, I want to know so I can get it right. Because I have blind spots and so do you. Sometimes we don't see ourselves like we really are. We imagine something that may be not and say, Lord, help me to see me through your eyes. That'll humble you. Because I need him. I need his help. And I'm glad that his salvation is still active in my life. There's still room. 
He's still working on me. The fascinating, the thing that just, I don't totally grasp is how I can be here on the earth with my imperfections. And sometimes I know my attitude that stinks. Don't go so spiritual, you too. And he still loves me. And he sees me at my very best, perfect and complete in Christ. Boy, I want to take communion real quick because I want to live at that stage of commitment. I, I want to bring forth fruit in keeping with my repentance. I, I, I want people to see that, that salvation is real in my life. And not out of a have to, but just because I'm so excited of what he's doing. You know, we talked in here just a little bit, this inheritance, incorruptible, undefiled, and the fate is not away. Reserved in heaven for you. Who's reserving that? God's paying attention. I, you know what? I don't think anybody's going to rip anything out of his hand. I just have this notion that my God is more powerful than anything that I can imagine. I want to lay up some treasure in heaven, don't you? And it's not just, you know, my attitude can lay up some treasure. My, my behavior, my giving, my sharing, my living, all those things. I, I, someday when we get to heaven, that fourth cup uh, that is the cup of celebration in the Jewish festival. Remember Jesus says, I won't partake of the cup again until you show up. At the marriage supper of the Lamb, wherever, when we all get to heaven and we're having a hoop to do time and the earth has gone through its tribulation, what a disparity. We are rejoicing in the Lord's presence and they are going through some terrible, terrible things. I'm not sticking around for that. Good luck on you if you are, but I'm not. And he says, and I will partake of the cup again with you when we get in there. And it's the cup of celebration. It's hallelujah because God has made provision. You know what? Tonight, we're only at, the third cup has to do with the cup of redemption. There were four cups during the Passover celebration. And we're, we're celebrating his death until he comes. But there's a day that's coming that we're going to partake of the, the new wine in heaven. I, some people argue whether it's fermented or not. I won't care. I won't be driving. <laughs> and, uh, but the other side is, boy, I'm going to be in his presence. I don't know what that does for you, but that sort of charges my batteries and then some. We could have a power surge here. A praise to God. Tonight, as we can prepare our hearts for communion, we say, Lord, here I am. Pour into my heart. Uh, cleanse me by your word. Cleanse me by your spirit. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. I know those. And I want all those things. But I, I am so, I, I can't not look at that and also see all the provision that I have for today. So I'm celebrating. I'm also looking for all the provision that will be forever and forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I got into the hallelujah chorus. Sorry. But I think about that. And I'm thankful for the salvation that we have. That Jesus Christ has died once and for all. Tonight is going to be a celebration of communion tonight. Uh, you know, sometimes we're very introspective, but you know what? I, I want you to think what God has done for your life. I want, to, I want you to think of his promises that he's kept, the things that he has accomplished in you. Hey, there's still work to go. We're all here. He would take us when we're, our work is done. So there's still stuff to be done. But the good news is that his salvation is current and vibrant today. Bow your heads with me for a moment. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the challenge, the encouragement from Peter. We thank you for the great salvation that we have as believers. We thank you for things that, that we really haven't totally figured it all out yet. But the things we have discovered, we, 
we know every good and perfect gift comes from you, so we, we're liking it. We thank you for this provision where we should cleanse our hearts continually. Every time we come to this table in remembrance of you, we celebrate what you've done. And we ask you to continue to be at work in our hearts. So we take time to quiet ourselves. Search my heart, Lord. Help me. But Lord, to turn me loose when I've confessed my sin, you are faithful and just. For Turn me loose to praise my God for his provision. Because Lord, I do thank you. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your salvation. Great is your provision. Morning by morning, we see all these things unfolding in our lives. And we get excited. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord is doing. And we believe that the Lord is going to continue in every day that we draw breath. And then when we leave this earth, it just gets better. Thank you for the hope that lies within us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to ask Steve and Albert if they'll come. And we're going to distribute these elements. I often ask Sean, I appreciate Sean in the sound room. He finds the right things. But I tell you what, tonight I'm going to just celebrate in the presence and the provision of the Lord. Not a morose thing, but a joyful thing. Check your heart. You know the drill. You're all saved. But you know what? We knew that. But I want to rejoice in the God of my salvation. Would you come? And we'll let Sean sing or put on the CD. He could play, too. We'd let him play. You come and hold your elements till we're all ready to go, and uh, we'll partake of the elements together. Maybe you just want to take a little time and thank the Lord for his faithfulness. Thank him for his goodness. Thank him for his provision. Thank him for saving your soul. Lord, we thank you for all those things and more. Hallelujah. Not only do we count our blessings, Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness to us morning by morning. Hallelujah. That invitation is pretty broad. Come Holy Spirit, I need you. Wherever you need, call on Him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you for the strength that you give us. The peace that our sins are forgiven.
Thank you for the provision. Anything we've needed, your hand is provided. Thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for trying to talk to some men like Peter and James and John to reveal the love of the Father for us. Sweep over our souls, I pray. And we just sense your presence, your power, your ability that's beyond our understanding. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for being a proactive God. You knew what I needed long before I did, and you already made provision. Lord Jesus, thank you for gathering your disciples in the night that you were betrayed. You gave them this communion You broke the bread. You said, this is my body. You let us know what it was all about. It's broken for you. Lord, thank you for being broken for me. And then you said, take, eat. This is for you. And so, Lord, I, I thank you that you cared about me, that you made all these provisions. You were nailed to the cross for me. Lord, tonight we partake of the bread with celebration for what the Lord has done and is doing and will continue to do. Your work never fails. You never quit. It never loses its power. The ability that you have to help us never gets old or weak. Shall we partake of the bread together in the remembrance of the Lord? Spirit of the living God. Thank you. We celebrate your work. Fill us now, Lord, with the right attitude, the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. After they supped, Jesus took the cup and he says, this is the cup, the New Testament of my blood. This, do as often as you eat it and drink it. Lord, we do remember your death. We remember your work and we live in a constant reminder of your provision and faithfulness. Lord, by your stripes we are healed. And there may be some tonight who just need you to touch their body. Lord, why not now? Why not to outreach down from heaven? And as we do this symbolic gesture, you do something of a very tangible nature. Because we're looking to you to be our help. So, Lord, we do partake of the cup together. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, shall we partake together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, may that be so in our lives. May your glory fill this place, our hearts. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We have your presence in us right now. Your continued help 
wisdom, direction, understanding, everything we need that pertains to life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we respond with great joy. Lord, we, we, we come to you with great thankfulness in our heart. We thank you for the divine infusion of life. Hallelujah. What a Savior. Let your glory fill our hearts, not just a place, but may we be inhabitations of your Spirit and the Most High God would live in us. Help us, O oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Breathe on us, O oh God. Spirit God. Thank you for infusion of power and strength, Lord. Thank you for, for hope. Thank you for joy. Thank you for the excitement that we just sense of your being in your presence and your word that comes alive. Sometimes our words run out, God. So good. Hallelujah. We're not afraid to have you breathe on us and through us and use us. You are a good God. Thank you for taking time. Thank you for investing the greatest treasure of all for our salvation. We look forward to the day when we celebrate anew in your presence. We look forward to the day, and, and Lord, we thank you right now for your provision, but we look forward to a time when some people that uh, have already gone in to be with you, we gather together around the throne, and we celebrate with the King of kings and the Lord of lords, because our God reigns. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for the provision of communion. Thank you for the joy and the power of the Holy Spirit that's ours. Thank you for times of refreshing. Sweep over our souls. Your presence is in this place. We sent you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for the peace that you give us now. We know it's true. Is in this place I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can feel the rush of angels' wings. I see glory each face, surely the presence of the Lord is this. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
You know, some people think that the revival in America might begin in Pennsylvania. So we were singing there and I was thinking about our group being right here in the presence of the Lord sweeping over. It might be just, you know what? Revival started in little towns in small groups who were together serving the Lord. Wouldn't that be cool? Maybe God will use us. I don't know about you, but I sometimes think way outside the box. It's not about the number of people, it's about, just about the power of God. To think that He would use us. Oh, tell you what, hold on. I believe God is not done with his church. Some think that William Penn, who started this holy experiment, if you look at the history of, of Pennsylvania, I, I know several scholars who said, revival is coming to America in the last day, and it will start in Pennsylvania. And I'm thinking, oh, you're, I pray. But you know what, whether it's the, the last revival or not, revival can still come to Pennsylvania, can't it? <laughs> and it can begin in me if I want him to revive me and make me filled with life. And the only way to, you know, revival spreads one-on-one. -on -one. Great revivals didn't need TV and radio, although they sometimes use them. Great revivals depend on people filled with the Spirit. Guess what? You are candidates to bring revival to America. Uh, that's not grandiose thinking. That's just something that I was, I was pondering. I said, Lord, could it be today? I want to fill you with some encouragement today. Yes, it could be today. This could be the start of something big. Where God is glorified. Who cares if we get credit? But where God is honored. I want you to go with a sense of hope and joy and anticipation and, and that openness to the Lord that uh, why not today? I don't know if the scholars are right. Many times they're wrong. But this time at least I'd like them to think that they'd be right. That God would do those things in our midst. I'm willing. Hey, God's willing. And I know you're willing. Hey, how can you miss? Before you leave, give an encouraging word to someone and say, you know what, I'm glad you're part of our family. Would you do that before you go? Lord bless you. Amen. Without a doubt, we'll know we've been in the presence of the Lord.